Today we are going to talk about a special type of series or a type of series in which uh, the terms, especially the middle terms, except for the first and the last term cancels out this special type of series is called a telescoping sum okay if our series or the sum of our sequence can be written in sigma notation in the form summation of f of i plus 1 minus f of i from or where i equals m to n okay it can be simplified to f of n plus 1 minus f of m. So, as you can see, kung meron tayong any uh, series no, or a sum of a sequence na kapag pinag-add natin or in-expand natin or nire-write natin in this uh, sigma notation at ganito yung kakalabasang uh, summoned no summoned imbis na uh, i-simplify nyo yan kung ganito yung itsura ng summoned natin imbis na expand mo yan ang mangyayari kapag ganito yung itsura ng summoned makakancel yung mga gitna that is for example ganito diba pag in-expand natin yan Use, uh, yung sigma notation na yan hanggang f of n, oh sorry uh, nag start tayo sa m, yun yung lower bound, so dapat yun pala yung beginning natin, f of m susundan ng f of m plus 1 plus f of m plus 2 plus hanggang marating natin yung f of n plus f of n plus 1 no? Pag in-expand kasi natin ito, mapapansin natin itong telescoping sum na makakancel out itong mga nasa gitna. At ang matitira lang is yung dulo, dalawang dulo, yung beginning at saka yung susunod dun sa ending or f of n plus 1. Next term dun sa upper limit. Kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa uh, simplification niya, dun sa right side, this is f of n plus 1 which is the next term after yung uh, upper boundary or upper limit minus f of m is the first term kasi we began at the first of term which is m. Uh, tinawag siyang telescoping sum because if you knew about yung uh, retractable, retractable telescope na saan yung retractable yung pwede mo siyang uh, hilain para humaba then pwede mo siyang i-collapse no expand and collapse kaya nga retractable so tinawag siyang telescoping sum kasi yung mahaba na telescope pwede mo siyang i-retract or i-collapse na kung saan ang makikita lang is yung beginning and yung ending ng telescope Diyan nang galing yung telescoping sum. So, para uh, ma-apply natin tong formula, sabi na natin formula or theorem or simplification para sa mga telescoping sum, dapat ma-rewrite uh, ma natin yung series natin as in sigma notation as ganito. Dapat ganito yung summon. Ibig sabihin, uh, dapat magkasunod siya. As you can see, yung f of i plus 1 tsaka f of i ay magkasunod. No, yung iba, ang gamit is f of i minus f of i minus 1. Pwede pa rin naman yun kasi magkasunod pa rin si f of i tsaka f of i minus 1. Basta magkasunod sila tsaka yung nauuna is mas malaki dun sa um, pangalawang part ng summon. No. Kasi di ba pag inarrange natin yan 1, 2, 3 Until some time na na-reach natin yung i minus 2 Susunod i minus 1 And then i Then susunod doon i plus 1 I plus 2 No Okay 
pwedeng kahit alin dyan ang gamitin nyo basta't magkasunod po. Mauna si i plus 1 kay i. ba? Diba? Nauna si i plus 1 kay i. Or nasusunod. Susunod si i plus 1 kay i. Basta yung mas malaki, dapat. Or dapat consecutive sila. So, kapag nare-write natin sila or nasulat natin yung ating series as ganyan ang itsura, okay, is, uh, instead of uh, adding, expanding and adding uh, the series or simplifying the series, pwede ang, ang equivalent na lang yan dahil telescoping sum is yung f of n plus 1 minus f of m. Okay. Para maintindihan nyo, Mag-solve tayo ng example. So, evaluate daw natin yung 1 all over 1 times 2 plus 1 all over 2 times 3 plus 1 all over 3 times 4 and so on plus 1 all over 99 times 100. So, if you could simplify this, no, kung imamano-mano natin siya, um, Pwede naman siguro kung tsatsagain mo, pero that is 100 fractions. Kung wala kang calculator or scientific calculator, sobrang hirap niyan. No? So, instead, i-write natin siya in sigma notation, baka naman uh, maging tel uh, telescoping sum siya. As you can see, yung fractions natin, 1, uh, yung dun sa fractions natin or your terms, are fractions na kung saan ang numerator ay 1. So, as you can see, lahat ng new terms or numerator ng terms natin, hindi ma nababago yung 1. So, kagaya ng na-discuss natin last time, kapag sinusulat natin yung sigma notation as a single summon, kung hindi yan nababago, kopyahin mo na lang kaagad. However, yung denominators ng terms natin ay may certain um, rule na fina-follow, di ba? Una, nag-start siya sa 1, and then minultiply siya sa 2. Yung sa second term, nag-start siya sa 2, and then minultiply siya sa 3, or yung susunod na number, or an integer. Then, nag-start siya sa 3, minultiply siya sa 4. So, ibig sabihin, yung sa denominator can be expressed as a product ng dalawang consecutive integers. So, nagsimula siya sa 1, so sabihin natin, Nag-start siya sa i, and then i-minumultiply natin siya dun sa susunod na integer, which is i plus 1. Tama? You can summarize every denominator in this expansion or in this series to be i times i plus 1, product of two consecutive integers. Saan siya nagsimula? From i equals 1 tayo nag-start, saan tayo nag-end? 99. No, kasi ang kinoconsider lang natin na nagbabago, eto lang, yung mga unang products or factors. And then, uh, yung mga susunod, nadagda, nagdadagdag na lang tayo ng plus 1 dun sa una. See? Uh, plus 1 difference lang. Kaya, ang limit natin is from 1 to 900 lang. No, hindi pwedeng 1 to 100. Okay, kasi kung 1 to 100, dapat meron pa tayong 1 all over 100 plus 101 dyan. Pero dahil hanggang 99 lang, yung unang factor, 1 to 99. Hi. <coughs> Now, uh, ang aim ko, because this is an example of telescoping sum, is ano ba yung formula natin? 
di ba dapat maging f of i plus 1 minus f of i or dapat magkasunod yan mas mauna yung mas malaki from i equals m to n pwede natin isimplify as f of n plus 1 minus f of m so I should express this as a difference of two terms i plus 1 and i however as you can see dito sa ating um, saman dito they are expressed as a single fraction so paghiwalayin natin siya pwede natin gamitan ng partial fraction or if you are familiar about partial fractions or I can just <coughs> express this like uh, express the summand like this. Pwede nating mag ako ng i pero magsusubtract pa rin ako ng i. So, it's like I'm adding zero. It's like I uh, I am not violating any mathematical rule. No? I added i but I also subtracted i. That means I did, uh, basically I did nothing. Why did I do that? So that, as you can see, para mapaghiwalay ko sila. Di ba? Kasi dito sa ating formula, it is expressed as the difference of two consecutive terms ng ating series. So dapat mapaghiwalay natin sila. And since they are, uh, the numerator is under one uh, product of denominator, pwede ko silang paghiwalayin in a way na i plus 1 all over i times 1 i plus 1 minus i all over i times i plus 1. No. Uh, I am not violating any rule here kasi they are, uh, the fraction here is under the same or under uh, one common denominator, and they are separated by addition and subtraction, so pwede ko silang paghiwalayin. No, it's like uh, two, 3 minus 2 all over 4 is the same as 3 fourth minus 2 fourth, and that gives 1 fourth, both uh, left and right side of the equation. So, wala tayong binaviolate. Uh, why did I do that? Para makancel ko yung i plus 1 tsaka yung i. No, simplify mo yan. You will get summation of uh, may i plus 1 sa taas, may i plus 1 sa baba. Sorry, dapat may parenthesis dito. Or bracket. So, makakancel tong i plus 1, magiging 1 minus i minus, eto naman sa pangalawa, si i naman ang makakancel. So, we have 1 plus i plus 1. Okay, medyo kamukha na siya, ba? Nitong uh, aim natin na maging telescoping sum siya. Pero, as you can see, dito sa telescoping sum, dapat na uuna yung mas malaki, i plus 1 kesa kay i. Eh, dito sa atin, nauna, dito sa sample natin, nauna si i kesa i plus 1. So, pagbabalik ka rin ko lang sila. Uh, I-rewrite ko lang siya dito dahil hindi na kasha. So, equal po sa 1 all over i minus 1 all over i plus 1. From 1, uh, from i equals 1 to 99. Again, uh, dun sa formula ko, mauna dapat si i plus 1 or f plus, f of i plus 1 kaysa kay i. Pagbabalik na rin lang natin sila. So, that means, maglalabas tayo ng negative sign dito sa labas. And then, mauunang na ngayon si i plus 1 minus 1 all over i. No. Kailangan natin maglagay ng negative dito. 
Kasi si i plus 1 ang negative. Nung switch natin, kailangan natin maglabas ng negative sign. Or it's like uh, factoring out negative 1. Okay? Um, property ng sigma notation is that kung meron kang um, constant na being multiplied to the summon, pwede mong ilabas. That means yung negative sign, ilabas na natin outside the sigma notation. And then we got 1 all over i plus 1 minus 1 all over i. As you can see, naging kamukha na siya ng ating formula. Ang formula na natin for telescoping sum, ayan na siya. So, to simplify yung formula daw na i plus 1, f of i plus 1 minus f of i, equal lang yun sa f of n plus 1, which is yung n is yung upper limit, minus f of m, where m is the lower limit. So, pag sinimplify natin to, it would become negative of 1 all over n plus 1, so 99 plus 1, kasi ito yung n natin, the upper limit is n, lower limit is m. Minus, okay, f of m, that is 1 all over, ang m natin is yung lower limit which is 1. So, 1 all over 1 equals negative ng 1 all over 100 minus 1. That is equal to negative ng 1 all over 100 minus 1 is negative 99 all over 100. And negative 99 all over 100 times negative na nasa labas, positive na siya. So, 99 all over 100 yung magiging sagot po natin. Our example is, we derive a formula for summation of i squared from i equals 1 to n using a telescoping sum with terms of f of i equals i cube. Okay, I'll use the next page. Let's derive a formula for i summation of i squared from i equals 1 to n using telescoping sum of terms f of i equals i cube. Okay, using the telescoping sum, again, what is summation of, since our f of i is i cube, I'll use i cube. i cube minus i minus 1 cube from i equals 1 to n. So, if I use f of i equals i cube, as you can see, yung i cube natin, tsaka i minus 1 cube, magkasunod yan, no? Uh, mas malaki si i kaysa kay i minus 1, or i is bigger than i minus 1. So, we can apply uh, the telescoping sum here. So, ano yung uh, telescoping sum natin? It would be, okay, uh, I'll I'll just clear this first. If we are trying to solve for f of i plus 1 minus f of i from i equals m to n, the simplification is f of n plus 1 where n is the upper limit minus f of m. However, if we transpose this, for example, if we use f of i, minus f of i minus 1. Uh, as you can see, it is still consecutive terms and i is still greater than i minus 1. So, we can still use the formula for the telescoping sum. However, because na-translate tayo, diba? as you can see, it's like nag-subtract tayo ng uh, 1. Diba? To get i, we subtract ma uh, 1 from i plus 1. And then, i minus 1 is i minus 1. So, in the same way, magsasubtract din tayo ng 1 dito sa sum natin. So, if we use f of i minus f of i minus 1 instead, uh, the simplification be, would be f of n minus f of m minus 1. It's like, again, we subtracted 1. We, own, uh, we translated the series 
one new or one term to the left that's why we subtract one but we can still uh, use the formula for telescoping sum why kasi ang gamit natin dito or ang gagamitin natin dito para ma-solve or ma-derive yung summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n is magsisimula tayo sa i cube and then i minus 1 that means pag sinimplify natin yan gamit yung telescoping sum ang magiging sum is i cube or sorry n cube no n minus 0 cube or that is n cube okay bakit kasi nag subtract tayo ng 1 nya so kung gagamitin natin tong f of i min summation ng f of i minus f of i minus 1 ang n natin is yung n pa rin na upper limit in this uh, telescoping sum ang n natin is still n so n cube Ang m natin is yung lower limit. Ang lower limit natin is 1. But dun sa simplification natin, kailangan natin siyang bawasan ng isa. So, 1 minus 1 is 0. Kaya 0 yung pangalawang term. Dun sa um, simplification ng telescoping sum. And that would give us n cube. Okay. That is using the telescoping sum. Now, since you are deriving the formula, okay, I'm going to erase that. I'll use uh, the conventional uh, or I, I will not use If I will not use the telescoping sum, what would I do is, I will expand this i minus 1 cube. Okay. And we, if we expand that, okay, sana marunong pa kayong mag-expand ng i, sorry, i minus 1 cube. That would give us i cube minus Three i squared plus three i minus one. Tama ba? Pag inexpand natin tong i minus one cube, yes. So that means minus the quantity. Ito, itong part na to, pag in-expand natin, ay ito. So, isa-substitute ko na siya doon. i cube minus 3i squared. This is without using ano na, no, uh, telescoping sum. Kasi nung ginamit nga natin yung telescoping sum, ito na yung nakuha natin, n cube. Further simplifying that. Okay, simplify natin. Pag dinistribute natin yung negative sign dito sa labas, ang makukuha natin is i cube, yung unang term, minus i cube plus 3i squared plus, oh sorry, minus 3i plus 1. Dinistribute ko yung negative sign. Okay, i cube minus i cube, cancel yan. So, ang matitira na lang dito is i equals 1 to n. 3i squared minus 3i plus 1. Okay, pwede nating dito na lang ha. Kasi wala na tayong space. Uh, pwede nating i-apply yung properties ng summation dito. Uh, linearity property ng sigma notation is kung separated tayo ng subtraction or addition, pwede natin silang paghiwalayin, tig-iisa sila ng summand. 
at yung mga prod, uh, constant terms or constant na nakamultiply dun sa term natin na 3, pwede natin silang ilabas. So, that means, yung summation ng 3i squared minus 3i plus 1 from i equals 1 to n ay magiging dito na lang po, 3 times summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n minus 3 summation ng i from i equals 1 to n plus 1 summation ng i or summation ng 1 from 1 to n. Simplify natin. Of course, dahil itong si i squared yung kinukuha na natin ng formula, hindi natin siya gagalawin. So, 3i, sorry, 3 summation ng, 3 summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n minus 3 times Okay, na derive na natin yung formula ng summation ng 1 or summation ng i from 1 to n last time. ba? Kung maalala nyo, yung 1 plus 2 plus 3 hanggang sa ilan or sum, sum ng consecutive positive integers hanggang n i n times n plus 1 all over 2. Kung maalala nyo, na-discuss natin ito last week. So, pwede natin i-apply yan dito. yung uh, summation ng i from i equals 1 to n ay magiging n times n so that would become 3 times n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus yung summation ng 1 from 1 to n is just n. Diba? Uh, nasabi natin to last time, property ng sigma notation, kapag nagsasum tayo ng constant c from i equals m to n, okay, ang simplification niya is c times n minus m plus 1. But since our m is 1 dun sa formula, mapapalitan niya ng 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So that is the same as c times n. And since our C is 1, that is 1 times N. So, ang simplica simplification ng summation ng 1 from I equals 1 to N I just equal to 1 times N is N. Yan. So, magiging N yan. Okay. I need space. <laughs> Sorry. Wait lang ah. So, ito, ito po ang simplification kapag ginamitan, um, pag kinuha natin yung sum nito, summation ng i cube minus 1 minus i raised to 3 from i equals 1 to n, nang hindi ginagamitan ng telescoping sum. Yan. I-rewrite ko siya dito. Summation ng i cube from 1 minus, uh, Summation ng i cube minus i minus 1 cube from i equals 1 to n. i equals sa 3 summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n. Minus 3 times n, times n plus 1, divided by 2, plus n. Ayan. Simplify pa natin, 3, summation ng i squared, from i equals 1 to n. So, ito ay 3n, tapos i-multiply natin sa n plus 1, we have minus 3n squared, plus 3n divided by 2. Nandito yung negative sign. Okay, ayan. Plus n. 
Okay. Ito yung simplification kapag hindi natin gagamitan ng telescoping sum. Pero di ba kapag ginamitan natin sa, ng, ng telescoping sum, ito, equal lang din sa n cube. So, kung parehas lang na sigma notation niya or series or summation, dapat equal lang sila. So, itong ito, na simplification without telescoping sum, dapat parehas lang sa n cube. No, kasi ito naman is kapag uh, ginamitan natin ng telescoping sum. Pero gamitan mo man o hindi, dapat parehas lang yung makuha mong sagot. At dahil dinederive natin yung formula for summation ng i squared, siya yung nandyan. So, i-isolate natin siya. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng kasama niya ay i-transpose natin sa kabila. So, 3 summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n. Transpose natin yung um negative 3n squared plus 3n all over 2, so magiging positive 3n squared plus 3n all over 2, and then yung positive n magiging negative n. Okay, gusto ko lang mawala yung fraction, so I can multiply by 2 on both sides, kasi mayroong fraction si 3n squared plus 3n, so I will get 6 summation ng i squared, from i equals 1 to n equals 2n cube plus wala, mawawala na yung denominator ni 3n squared plus 3n tapos magkakaroon naman ng minus n ah, minus 2n dito okay kasi nag multiply tayo ng 2 and from here makikita natin si 3n minus 2n ay pwede nating isimplify so, 6 summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n equals 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n. Kasi 3n minus 2n is n. Okay, factor out natin. Pwede kong i-factor out si n dito. Dito po sa 2n cubed plus 3n squared. Then may matitirang 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. And then pwede mo pa ulit i-factor out si 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. Factor natin siya. So dalawang parenthesis. Factor ng 2n squared is 2n at saka n. Factor ng positive 1 is plus 1 plus 1 para makuha si 3n. Tama. Ayan, factor out na. And since ang gusto ko lang is summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n, eh meron tayong nakamultiply na 6. Pwede na tayong mag-divide ng 6 on both sides. So, Divide by 6, divide by 6, and therefore, makakancel na yung 6 dito sa right. Kaya, summation ng i squared from i equals 1 to n ay equal po dun sa, yun sa kabila, n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 1 all over 6. n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 1 divided by 6. So, what really is mathematical induction? Mathematical induction is a way of proving um, certain properties that you claim or if you want to claim a certain property that it is a property on the set of positive integers, especially on the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you no know, set of positive or natural numbers from 1 to n, you use mathematical induction to prove that the property is true for any value or any integer n. 
Okay, if we have a PN, a property or a statement about an integer n, okay, we can prove that this property is true for uh, all integers n if, step 1, you prove that the property is true for the lowest term or least term in your uh, in the set or in the sequence uh, usually this is 1 so you prove that p of 1 is true that means kapag uh, yung first term lang or yung unang term dapat uh, true yung property na clinic claim mo pangalawa i-assume mo that pk is true to prove that pk plus 1 is also true. Kapag nagawa mo itong dalawang requirements na to, then you can therefore conclude that the property pn is true for all integers n, kahit anong n pa yan. So ulitin natin, kung gusto mong i-prove ang property na uh, true siya or applicable siya sa lahat ng integers ng n. Dalawa ang gagawin mo. Una, i-prove mo na totoo siya or true siya kapag p of n uh, kapag in-apply sa p of n 0 or usually that is p of 1. You prove that p of 1 is true. Pangalawa, i-assume natin na pk is true and i-prove natin that pk plus 1 is also true given that yung assumption natin, p, K, p of k is true. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, actually dalawa yung ano, method or approach sa mathematical induction. This is, ito yung more familiar. This is the mathematical induction of the first kind and ito lang yung discuss natin. Okay. If you want to know about the second kind, you'll research about it. Okay. Alam ko medyo <laughs> ang sinasabi niyo diyan, sir. Okay. Uh, imagine this way, ano, ito yung minsan analogy na ginagamit, kadalasang analogy na ginagamit. Okay, para ma-prove mo yung property, para ka lang umaakyat sa isang hagdan. For example, i-prove mo muna na kaya mong umakyat doon sa unang step ng hagdan. Yan. Yan yung first part. You prove that P of n equals uh, P of 1 is true. You prove mo na kaya mong umakyat doon sa unang hagdan. <laughs> unang baitang ng hagdan. First step ng hagdan. Pangalawang step, kung kaya mong pumunta sa kahit anong bilang or kahit anong number ng steps, K, then kaya mong umakyat pa doon sa susunod pa kay K, which is K plus 1. Yun yung analogy natin. At kapag na-prove mo itong part 1 and part 2, kaya mo nang umakyat kahit saan pa. Kahit ilan pang baitang yan. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng mathematical induction of first kind. Ipo-prove mo gamit yung dalawang parts na ang for certain property ay applicable kahit anong number or positive integer ang gagawin natin. O gagamitin natin. Okay, i-apply natin sa example. Yan. Ito yung formula natin kung maalala nyo sa sum ng um, consecutive positive integers. This is uh, the summation of i from i equals 1 to n. Ito yung formula natin. n times n plus 1 all over 2. Ipuprove natin ngayon using mathematical induction na this is true for all positive integers n. That is, kahit anong isubstitute mong number dyan, 101 million, applicable itong formula natin. Okay? First step, i-prove natin na P1 is true. Okay? Ang P1, ibig sabihin, isang term lang. Of course, kung isang term lang yan, dun sa sum natin, 1 lang yon. At of course, kung mag-isa niya lang, siya na din yung sum. di ba? is p1 equals 1. Pag sinubstitute natin dito sa formula natin, if n equals 1, 1, 
times 1 plus 1, dito po, substitute natin sa formula dito, divided by 2, that would give us 1 times 2 over 2, and 1 times 2 all over 2 is 2 over 2, and that is equal to 1. So, na-prove mo na P equals 1 is also equal to 1, kahit gamit ng formula na to. So, P1 is true, no? That is the part, part 1. P1 is true. Ayan. Okay, check. Kung na-prove mo na P1 is true, pwede ka nang mag-proceed dun sa pangalawang requirement. I-assume natin that PK is true. Ah, sorry. Assume PK is true and prove that PK plus 1 is true. Okay. Kung hanggang K tayo, 1 plus 2 plus 3 hanggang K, using our formula which is N times N plus 1 all over 2, ang magiging sum dapat niyan is K times K plus 1 all over 2. Okay. E assume natin na true ito. Prove natin that PK plus 1 is true. So, kung hanggang PK plus 1 yan, syempre, aabutin muna niya yung K, tapos idadagdag mo yung K plus 1. Ang magiging formula natin is papalitan natin yung N dito sa formula ng K plus 1. Kasi hanggang K plus 1 yung dulo natin. So, magiging K plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. No, yung formula dito, papalitan mo lahat ng n ng k plus 1. So, k plus 1 times k plus 1, tapos meron pang plus 1, originally dun sa formula. So, we have k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2, divided by 2. Okay, how do we prove na true? Itong, K, uh, itong formula for PK plus 1. Doon tayo sa left side. Dito tayo mag-work. Tapos, i-prove natin na magiging equal siya doon sa right. Okay. Bago natin maabot yung K plus 1, makukuha muna natin yung sum hanggang K. Tama? Pero, di ba inasum natin na sum ng K is K times K plus 1 all over 2. 2 ito ah, hindi Z. Sorry. 2. Ayan, 2. Ibig sabihin, yung 1 plus 2 plus 3 hanggang k, pwede kong palitan ng k times k plus 1 over 2. Kasi in natin na true siya. So, dito, sa left side, dito, yung 1 plus 2 plus 3 hanggang k, ay papalitan ko ng k times k plus 1 divided by 2 and idadagdag ko yung k plus 1. Dapat maging equal siya dito sa right side. K plus 1 times K plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, isisimplify ko yung left side. Dapat uh, maging equal siya dito. Yun yung aim natin para ma-prove na true yung K plus 1. So, uh, gamitin natin sa la least common denominator nila ay 2. So, we got 2 k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Tama po ba? Still, hindi natin alam kung o, oh, simplify ko na nga yung k plus 1 plus 1. Gawin ko ng k plus 2 divided by 2. Ayan. Dito sa left side, as you can see, sa left side lang tayo nag-work, no? Kasi ipoprove nga natin na equal siya dun sa right side. Uh, dun sa numerator, uh, common factor si k plus 1. So, pwede natin siyang i-factor out. Kapag finactor out natin si k plus 1, ang matitira dito sa unang term ay k. At ang matitira dito sa pangalawang term ay 2. So, k plus 2 divided by 2. 
And as you can see, yung left side at saka yung right side ay parehas. Check. At kung parehas yan, ibig sabihin, the property or your statement is true for all integers n. So, kahit anong integer na n. So, yun na. Na-prove mo na. Uh, Mag-conclude ka na lang. Pero okay naman na yun na proof using mathematical induction. Here. Ito yung ano natin kanina. Uh, Dinerive natin formula for summation ng i squared. This is our formula for the summation of i squared from i equals 1 to n. Okay. Uh, na ano lang siya, na rearrange lang. Nauna lang si 2n plus 1 dun sa dinerive natin kanina. Pero i-prove daw natin ito using mathematical induction na true siya for in all integers n. So, 1 yung uh, least term natin or first term. So, p of 1 is just equal to 1. So, ang sum niya is 1. No, kasi mag-isa niya lang 1 squared equals 1. Of course, kung mag-isa lang niya. Pero, eh, tignan natin kung pag sinubstitute ba natin dito sa formula, when n equals 1 ba, 1 pa rin yung makukuha natin. So, we get 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 divided by 6. That means 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So, 1 times 2 times 3 divided by 6 is 6 over 6 or 1. Therefore, P of 1 is true. Okay. Usually, talaga, uh, 1 yung ano, umpisa. Kasi yun naman ang mga uh, natural numbers. Magsimula tayo sa positive integer 1. So, kung na-prove mo na na P of 1 is true, dun ka na, ito yung first requirement, di ba? Part 1. Ayan. If na-prove mo yung part 1, you can now, if na-prove mo na true yung part 1, you can now proceed to part 2, which is, you assume, again, assume PK is true, to prove pk plus 1 is true. Okay, I'll write it again. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared hanggang k I using the formula we have k ito, ito formula n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So, k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 divided by 6. Assume natin na true yan, i-prove natin na yung hanggang k plus 1 is true. Siyempre, madadaanan mo muna si k squared bago mo may dagdag si k plus 1 squared. And if k plus, uh, if n equals k plus 1 dito sa formula natin, we will get k plus 1. Palitan mo ng k plus 1 lahat ng n dito. Ayan. So, ang magiging sagot natin is k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. That is k plus 2. Pero ilagay na lang natin yan. k plus 1 plus 1 times 2 times k plus 1 plus 1 ulit. divided by 6. Again, dapat ma-prove natin na yung left ay equal sa right. So, how do we do that? Since in natin that pk is true, so again, yung hanggang k squared dito ay pwede nating palitan nung assumption natin about pk. That means, k, yung sum, ng 1 squared hanggang k squared is k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 
divided by 6. This is our assumption dito. Plus, idadagdag ngayon natin yung k plus 1 squared. So, let's show, hindi pa natin aram, na equal siya dun sa right side, k plus 1, k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2. <coughs> Uh, right side that is uh, distribute ko lang si 2 so we have 2k and then 2 times 1 is 2 tapos meron kang plus 1 sa labas so that is 3 and then they divide ko ng 6 so the next is pure algebra na lang ipoprove ko na parehas yung left and right pero dito lang ako mag work sa left side so again uh, you have to write left, the left side in one common denominator, which is 6. So, k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. And then, magiging plus 6 times k plus 1 squared. Okay. Is it? Okay, I'll... I'll okay. So, k plus 2. Kukopihin ko lang sa right side. No? Hindi natin gagalawin. Uh, once na simplify mo, hindi mo na siya gagalawin. Kasi ipoprove mo nga na left equals right. And sa left tayo nag-work. Okay. Simplify natin si left. Uh, ano kaya ang pwedeng i-factor sa kanya? Pwede natin i-factor si k plus 1. No, kasi tignan nyo, uh, nakamultiply itong lahat, and then separated sila by addition, then ito ay k plus 1 squared. So, pwede ako mag-factor out ng k plus 1, kasi there is a, on the first term of the binomial, meron tayong k plus 1, tapos yung second term, 6 plus k plus 1 squared. So, pwede kong i-factor out si k plus 1 dyan. Pag finactor out natin si k plus 1, Matitira na lang is k times 2k plus 1 plus 6. So, k plus 1 squared ito, yung dito sa pangalawa, ay naglabas ka na ng isang k plus 1. Kaya matitira na lang is isa na lang na k plus 1 divided by 6. Uh, pataas tayo ah, sorry <laughs> wala na talaga akong space wala atang space sa next o wala Ayan, so pataas tayo or lagay ko na lang dito sa taas uh, isisimplify ko tong nandito sa loob kung saan ko finactor out si k plus 1 so meron tayong k plus 1 dito sa labas and then, ito, distribute natin si k. So, we have 2k squared plus k. Multiply to 2k squared plus k. No? And then, yung isa naman, distribute naman natin si 6. 6k plus 6. Plus 6k plus 6. Siyempre, divided by 6 pa rin. Uh, Okay. Um simplify. Okay. Simplifying again. Uh combine like terms lang natin dito. So 2k squared 6k plus 7k uh 6k plus 6k is 7k and then plus 6 divided by 6. Factor natin Let's factor out 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. So, let's draw two parentheses. Parentheses. So, k and... Uh, factor out 2k squared. k and 2k. Factor out 6. Factor 6. So, that we get 
7k inside. So that is k plus 2 and then plus 3. Yan. That is the proper factoring divided by 6. And as you can see, the left side is now equal to the right side. Thus, you now proved, you've already proven that the property or the formula is true for all positive integers.